Exhort, evangelize, and preach. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad Rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Rocks of Revelation being poured out to you. Now, today I'm doing a podcast on another topic that has been stirring in my soul for some time, a long time, and uh, it's bubbling up to the surface for me to finally just do a podcast about it. And when I do these podcasts, it's something that the Lord is planting like a seed. I mean, it's really interesting. You know how the sower sows the word, and Jesus says, let this sink down into your ear. You know, we have to remove the rocks of the things that fight God, the rocks of offense like bitterness, unforgiveness, and stuff like that, so that the the word can actually go in. We can have ears that hear, and the word becomes fruitful. And this is something that's been stirring, and you don't, as soon as you plant a seed, as soon as you sow a seed, you don't just go and dig it up to see if it's growing. It takes a while. You rise and sleep, you rise and sleep, and you know not how, but God gives the increase. And these, this type of word has just been stirring. As soon as it, it just pricked the ear of my soul, and it's just coming up, and I've got to talk about it. The, the words are exhort, evangelize, and preach. We're going to be talking about those today. Let me see if I can give you a commonality here. Have you ever been sitting in church and look around and just go, you know, where is this in Scripture? Why are we doing this, you know? And then God, the Spirit of God brings to remembrance things, and you're just like, oh, man, uh, there's a disparity here. And that's that's one of my pet peeves. I see some traditions that we have. Your traditions have nullified the word of God, you know, as Jesus said to the Pharisees, which is our religious system. And as we read the book of Acts, don't you just kind of get angry, you know? So one of the things um, that I'm I'm noticing is that Jesus says these signs shall follow them that believe in Mark sixteen. Well, let's back up because the word preach is in here. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that, believeth is, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents. If they drink any deadly things, shall not hurt them. They shall lay the hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Now, it's interesting that the word preach is in here, (laughs) because we're going to be talking a little bit about that. But here I'm seeing these signs that follow believers. And is this happening today? Because here we see in verse 20, they went forth and preached where? Everywhere. (laughs) Okay. I'm like, oh, wow, this is a really good, I just, I was thinking about something else, but here's the word preach. And they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Lord working with them were co-laborers with Christ, right? And then it confirms the word with signs following. Amen? So there's signs that confirm the word. And I'm like, oh, man, I've got to keep this in my radar of Christianity to see where I am in the faith. We need to examine ourselves, as Scripture says, to see if we're in the faith. We need to look at ourselves soberly. Amen. We need to work out our salvation with trembling and fear. And one of the things I see here is if there's no signs and wonders going on, there's got to be, there's something missing. Maybe there's not believers. You know, and everybody quotes Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So whose people perish? My people. (laughs) Lack of knowledge? Well, if there's no 
uh, signs following and Jesus says this is going to happen, well, there's, there's something that we're missing. There must be something that we don't know. And I just I wanted to to talk about these three words today because I think we might be missing the mark. And you know, sin means to miss the mark. It means not to get it perfect. So first, let's talk about the word exhort. Exhort in the Greek is paraklesis. Sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? Like paraclete, but it's paraklesis. Uh, it means imploration, hortation, solace, comfort, consolation, exhortation. That is the Strong's, but let's go ahead and look at the King James Dictionary. It means to embolden, to cheer, to advise. The primary sense to be seems to be to excite or to give strength, spirit, or courage. And I'm going to read all of this because I think a lot of us might uh, have a different paradigm of what the word exhort means in the original context. Uh, number one means to incite by words or advice, to animate or urge by arguments to a good deed or to any laudable conduct or course of action. I exhort you to be of good cheer, Acts 27. Young men also exhort to be sober-minded, exhort servants to be obedient to their masters, Titus 2. Uh, the second definition is to advise, to warn, to caution. The third is to incite or stimulate to exertion. Okay, that's all well and good, but you know, let, let's use that word in a sentence, right? Okay, in 1 Corinthians 14, 3, Paul is exhorting the Corinthians to covet to po- prophesy. And prophesying speaks exhortation. In 1 Corinthians 14, 3, he says, But he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. And that's kind of what I do when we're out and about uh, praying for people. It's interesting how all the saved people that are lukewarm and have, are, have fallen, you know, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, seem to come across our path. And then, like when Johnny Gaston, when he's preaching to people, he, he gets all the unbelievers. I'm just like, wow, that's God. He just he brings the fish to your boat. I've, it's amazing how he does that. And then when we prophesy, what I'm looking for when we're praying for people is we're looking for a course correction in their life. Jesus says he's given us keys to the kingdom, you, and these keys are like, you know, we have the keys to the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom. You know, you probably need some keys, right? And his ways of doing things right. You've got his keys, and these things, shall be, these things shall be added unto you. So when we're praying with these lukewarm, backslidden Christians that are out there having a, a rough time, we say, look, life is better. You can have life abundantly. Let's talk about the keys. What are you harboring? What's going on with you? Do you have some unforgiveness? Do you have some root of bitterness? Do you have some church hurt? Do you have stuff like that going on in your life? And as we pray with them, I'm seeking a word of knowledge, a word of wisdom, right? But, you know, even if I don't, you can sit there and counsel them, and God will give you one, a, a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, without you really thinking that it is a word of knowledge. It happens so many times because as we're conversing, the Scripture, you know, he says that he will bring to remembrance whatsoever he's told you. The Scripture will come up in the conversation that's a kingdom key for that person, and we can exhort them to rise up in their faith in Jesus. Amen? Here's another passage. In Acts fourteen twenty one through 22, um, when they had preached the gospel in that city and taught many, they returned to Lystra and Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls and disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. And that's another thing we do. When these people are out on the streets or whatever or in the flea market, there's a lot of people that are backslidden and lukewarm. They feel, they feel in their spirit that they are off course and we need to we pray for them, and you need to do this too. Give them these kingdom keys and say, look, we must through much tribulation enter the kingdom of God. Do not give up. Do not give up. Let's get on fire. Let's take this world for Jesus. Look at what's happening to America today. It's because the apathy in the Christian church in America. We need to rise up. Team Jesus needs to rise up. 
Next, I'm going to move on to the word evangelist, right? Um, we always see evangelist. You know, we think of people like Reinhardt Bunke. And I was looking in both the Strongs and the Thayers, and there's not really much there, but we see the word angel in the English, and I'm like, oh, wow, there's got to be something to that, amen. But in the Greek, it's uh, from Greek 2097, a preacher of the gospel, an evangelist. And when we think of evangelist, we think of 2 Timothy 4, 2 through 5. And to be quite honest, man, uh, I was looking it up. It's only like used three times in the New Testament. Acts 21, 8 says Philip the evangelist. And 2 Timothy 4, 5, which I'm about to read. And then Ephesians 4, 11 about the gifts. You know, so there's not really much said about evangelists. But here we see that it is a preacher of the gospel Notice here that he says to Timothy in 2 Timothy 4, 2, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all longsuffering and doctrine. Isn't this awesome? All the words we're looking at right here in this passage. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. So we can kind of see that that's what's happening right now. (laughs) People think that if you're a Christian, you're not going to go through much tribulation like we just talked about. We're not going to endure afflictions. However, it's, it's all throughout the New Testament. It just doesn't, people don't like to hear it. But we need to read our Bibles, people. This is in here. This stuff like that is in the Bible, and we need to read the Bible because it's self-defense against false doctrine. So now there's not too much uh, on the word evangelist, but it says he's a preacher of the gospel. So let's see what the word preach means. Now you might find this interesting. I want you to ask if you don't already know what preach means. I want you to think of your current paradigm. What do you think it means in your spirit? Like, if you were going to define preacher, right, what do you think that means? And then analyze, where did you get that definition? Is it possible that you got that definition not from reading the Word of God, but from what's been handed down to you from traditions, not over the decades, but the centuries? Amen? Here's the definition um, right here. Preach, it comes from the Greek word keruso, of uncertain affinity. It means to herald as a public crier, especially divine truth, the gospel. Preach means to proclaim or publish. Now, it's a public crier. Where do people preach? They preach to the saved people inside buildings. It's not really a public crier, right? We're going to read three passages here about preaching, and let's see if we can get it into biblical context. And here's the words of our Lord, Matthew 10, 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth, and that speaks volumes right there, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and in any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is kind of what we do. We're, we're for the lost sheep, right? Um, that's our passion right now. And then here comes the word preach. In verse 7, he says, And as ye go. Now notice that they're moving. Okay, They're not stationary in one place. They're moving. Christianity is like a portable religion. Amen. As you go, preach. And this is what they're supposed to say. He says, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, without breaking, he he says this. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. Then he says this about the preaching. Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. For the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who is in it is worthy, and there abide till you go hence. 
Isn't that something? I mean, it's it's completely different than the paradigm that we have in our heads from traditions thrust down upon us from generations. Matthew ten twenty six through twenty eight, same chapter. Jesus is still speaking. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak you in light, and what you hear in the ear, preach ye upon the housetops. Does this sound? This sounds more public, doesn't it? And it also sounds like a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. What I tell you in darkness. They're gone, and Jesus is sending them out. So this is going to be a spiritual relationship with the biblical Jesus. What Jesus tells us in darkness, in the night seasons, God seems to speak to us in the night seasons. This whole Nehemiah revelation thing that came forth has started bubbling forth in my spirit and is continuing to be a significant part of my life right now is from night seasons. A lot of people, that the Lord said uh, to a lot of people here recently, that they're supposed to preach on Nehemiah. What? He spoke to them in the night seasons. I surveyed a few pastors that were preaching about Nehemiah, and they started preaching about Nehemiah. Now, that came in the night. But where were they supposed to preach? On the housetops. (laughs) Amen. And then it says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body. This is not preaching to a bunch of saved people in a closed room. You're preaching to people that might kill you. So there's a paradigm that's been thrust upon us over centuries by generation from generation of of preaching in a building. And it's, you know, there's maybe a pastor there, but preaching is where a lot of people, uh, we just get this word in our head that that's the preacher. Speaking of God, speaking to people in the night seasons, this is one of my favorite chapters, uh, Acts 16, 9 and 10. And a vision appeared to Paul. When? In the night. Isn't it amazing how God talks to us when our mind quiets down? And there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him, saying, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, a surely gathering that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel unto them. Anyway, God speaks from heaven. He speaks to us in the night seasons, and we're to be public heralds and criers. Um, wow. I mean, that just really kind of blows my paradigm. Actually, one of the funny things was, I, I was uh, going on Bill Street. You know, Susan and I were going with the, the signs, and I think Michael and David were with us, and We're carrying our signs, the Jesus sign, the free prayer sign, and we're just going down Bill Street on one of those nights where everybody was hell-bent on sinning, you know, and um, I was kind of surprised that there were some people playing some worship music with a PA system, and we had our Jesus shirts on, and I'm going to encourage you guys to just wear your Christian T-shirts, you know, (laughs) because it's amazing. It's like the... The fish symbol. You know that that person is a Christian, you know. And uh, he saw my shirt. He saw the sign. He goes, do you want to talk? I mean, he, that's the first thing he said to me. So I began to to preach on the public street there uh, on Beale Street across from the Hard Rock. And I started preaching relationship, not religion. You know, we need to know Jesus. And believe it or not, the cops came up and says, you got to stop. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what that means, man. But those are the people that need to hear it, you know. Um, We need to get outside and preach. And we ran across this guy. We we were uh, doing an outreach with uh, Frontlines Mobile, you know, Johnny Gaston and Jacob, Frontlines Mobile, and uh, a snow cone outreach. And it was like a divine appointment day. It was an amazing day. And uh, I, I don't know how to say it, but when, when you start fishing in your own carnal mind, you try to figure things out, and uh, then the Lord says, hey, man, throw that net on the other side. I see you've been laboring in your own strength. Let me bring somebody to you. And it was amazing how the people just kept coming up to us. But at the end of that day, I saw this man on the side of the road. He had set up his PA system. We were going to eat a pizza, and we saw him setting up. And I made a mental note. I'm like, you know what? After our pizza, we need to go back by this guy and see what's up. 
because there's something about that guy. Something bore witness in my spirit that he was going to be preaching, <laughs> you know. And um, we're driving back, and sure enough, this man had this uh, vehicle, and he had the PA system. He had, like, a pulpit, and he had a microphone, and he was preaching the gospel. So we went over there, and we started looking at him. We're like, going, you know, this is this is right. This is right. People, pe- the public needs to hear the proclaimed, heralded word of God, of the good news that Jesus Christ can save them from their sins. And uh, I was just blown away. I went up, and I met the man. I got his phone number. And as I was in awe of this street preacher preaching out in the parking lot, two or three people came up and gave this man an offering. And I'm like, he didn't have to compel them. He didn't have to beg for money. He didn't have to say, you're going to be cursed with a curse. But he was doing the right thing. And it bore witness with people like, look, I need to support this man. He's doing the right thing. I'm like, you know, this is biblical. This is biblical preaching. Yeah, and I see articles, I'm calming down here, but I see articles just popping up about how wicked America is getting, and and we're just, a lot of us are just hiding in our buildings waiting for the rapture, and that's not to be so. We're to go out and exhort, preach, and evangelize our communities, man. Do you see how important that is? And we're hiding in a box. I often ask people, if your church disappeared today, would your community even know what what type of impact would it have on the community? And it's time for Team Jesus to rise up. We need to actually step outside of our comfort zone, endure the afflictions, do the good work of an evangelist, and get people into the kingdom of God. Amen? <laughs> God bless you. I want to thank you for being in my life. If this has touched you, please consider sharing this on on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Till we meet again, dig deeper and go higher. Dig deeper, go higher at comradrocks.net.